let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Welcome. And of course, the biggest news is that we now have Natalie on the commission. So we're slowly starting to grow our group once more. Uh, some of you have had the chance to meet Natalie at the uh, public art subcommittee meeting prior to this meeting. But for those who haven't met you, Natalie, we can take a minute, you know, one to three minutes just to tell them who you are, where you're from, and why you're here. Yeah, I can definitely do that. So my name's Natalie. Uh, I was an undergrad at IU until May of last year. Um, and all throughout my undergrad, I worked with the IU Arts and Humanities Council. Um, and upon graduation, started working there as the internal programs coordinator. Um, so I do a lot of work um, kind of bridging the gap between IU and the Bloomington community. Um, in undergrad, I also did a lot of work um, at the Jacobs School and with the um, School of Public and Environmental Affairs, um, particularly started a club called Tiny Dorm Concerts, uh, where we did, we hosted concerts in my dorm room and it was a great time. But uh, now moving on to other things. And um, yeah, I went to a few BAC meetings in undergrad and was always interested in joining. So I'm really happy to be here uh, and really excited to get to know all of you and do some really cool work uh, in the community. Yeah, it's me. And just to add, Natalie has joined both the subcommittees right now um, with hopes of either participating on both or eventually finding that she will take one over the other. Apology, my dogs just decided to wrestle right next, right underneath my desk. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments for Natalie? Yeah, just uh, welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, so Natalie, as I mentioned on our prior meeting, if anything is unclear or whatever, just raise your hand, stop us. Um, I'd much rather have that interruption than to have you lost in the meeting. And uh, and while you won't grasp everything at once, um, you know, the more the more you do, the better. So let's go ahead. Let me load the agenda. And Holly, if you can give us the staff report. Sure. Uh, I'm going to talk about three things today. Uh, the first is uh, more council and commission appointments. So again, welcome, Natalie. I'm so glad you're here. Really looking forward to working with you. Um, so um, in addition to um, the vacancy that Natalie filled, we currently have four councillor vacancies on the commission. Um, and we, so council is now in the process of conducting interviews of applicants. Um, they started this week, woohoo! So my hope is that that means we will have all seats filled by our March meeting and we can start allocating more people to different committees and allocate someone to be the secretary and take meeting minutes. <laughs> Uh, yes, that will be a very important step. Yeah, uh, it should yeah. not fall on you to take yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm happy to do it. I just, yeah, I feel like they could be more thorough. And thank you all for bearing with me while I'm doing that work. But I'm um, really excited to welcome a new diverse group of individuals to the board. As, um, as people are appointed, I will keep you all updated. And then um, generally what happens is we have a new commissioner, Bryony and I both meet with them and just kind of review with expectations. I beg them to be the largest megaphone in the world for us. Um, and we just get them on board and ready to go. So very excited that that's finally coming to a head. Um, and again, I'll keep you posted as people are appointed. Um, I also wanted to share, um, I'm not sure how many of I, sh if I shared this last meeting or not, but um, we are now slated to do a reopening ceremony for the Waldron Art Center on March 4th. So that's the first Friday of March. Um, and the Waldron is, um, officially part of gallery walk for this year. So we'll be on the map. And I think we've agreed in prior meetings that it's always good if we try to align BAC events, whether they are like exhibition openings or ribbon cutting ceremonies for different 1% for the arts projects with First Friday, just because we've got that built in audience and places like the Waldron and the Fourth Street Garage, whose art installation will soon be celebrating are right along that path of where individuals are going. Um, for gallery walk. So that's super exciting. Um, the opening celebration is going to consist of some super cool 
art on the walls of the gallery. It's going to be a great mix of um, individuals and organizations that have shown there historically, but also doing some highlighting of uh, next generation um, artists in Bloomington. Um, and I'm really excited to put that together. We're going to have some live music in the gallery. Thanks already to Natalie for helping me track down those musicians. And then um, Cardinal Stage is actually going to be the first theater company that uses the third floor auditorium in the Loden. They're actually in the Waldron. They're starting their Loden on February 21st. So we're doing a lot of work right now just to make sure the auditorium is up to snuff and in good shape for them and other users after them to come in and use the space. So March 4th will actually be um, the second day of the run of their new play. Um, so um, we're gonna. I'm gonna start advertising this next week. I will send you all the information and ask you to help share the news. And if you're available, I've sent you all an invitation um, by a Google Calendar. If you're able to make it, please do come around. It should be super cool. Um, but um, I'll send you all the information if you'd like to come to the showing um, of Cardinal Stage. That performances at 7.30 and they're doing a pay what you will program right now. So it's accessible to all and you don't have to pay a bunch of money to get a ticket. So it should be really cool. Um, any questions about that? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna move on to our feasibility study. Um, so part of the Waldron Task Force um, that was convened um, after Ivy Tech gave the Waldron back to the city, the Waldron Task Force was like, okay, Waldron in the short term and after the Waldron reopens and we have that kind of as a, at least a Band-Aid facility for the next five years, we're gonna do another feasibility study to say, okay, is Waldron it for our arts center in town or should we build something new? Or should we build something new and find other resources and programs that we can put into place in the city just to make arts accessible, not just for people who are coming downtown to see a specific show, but so they can walk around the corner and see a great band performing or go into another facility where they can see arts on the walls. So um, we are starting to work with that company more intently. Um, Trahan Architects are the people we're partnering with to do this feasibility study. Um, right now, they're kind of working remotely. They're gathering data about things that are available into Bloomington now, what our population looks like, what they anticipate our populations might need. And then they're gonna land here um, in late March to start touring our facilities. And they're gonna start meeting with stakeholders. It's gonna be a pretty small group for their March meeting just to give a presentation about what they feel Bloomington needs and next steps based on what their feelings are and feedback that people like me in office of the mayor and probably some of you give in that initial meeting as well. Once they have that information, they're gonna do a little processing and then they're going to come back in April and start conducting a set of workshops. They're going to do 20 hours of workshops in all, and this is going to be with stakeholders like the BAC and other arts leaders and arts representatives in the community to, again, really assess what Bloomington's ultimate needs are and how they're being met with facilities and programs. So again, as we're scheduling those meetings and I'm getting more details about what they are really thinking are good things that Bloomington needs, I will be sharing that information with you. If at any point you have any idea you'd like to share with them, just let me know. Um, I'm happy to share it with them. I've warned them that they're going to get 10 hours of Holly just talking their ears off about all my ideas so they can say yes, yes, no, heck no, what are you crazy? No, yes, okay, maybe. Um, so I'm happy to share any of those with you in advance in the workshops. And of course, as we're meeting with them, I just invite you to bring your wildest visions of what this could be to the table. Any questions for Holly on any of these topics? Is there any particular involvement that anybody wants to have with the piece of the, with the study? Or do you have suggestions of who should be involved? Um, I'm curious, and you may have addressed this already, but to what extent, um, like, spaces, community spaces versus like Indiana University campus spaces will be considered as like part of that cultural network? I think 
That's a great question. And I would actually appreciate your help in thinking about what those spaces are. So right now I have Waldron, BCT, and the Banneker Center kind of as my top choices. I'm also going to be um, collaborating with some colleagues at different departments at the city, including Parks and CFRD, who is like community relations and community programming, who are often using different facilities around the city um, to host cultural activities. So I'll be looking to them too about venues like this, like Switch Park or Switchyard Park um, and other facilities. So but is the BPP theater becoming a little bit more open? Yes, that's a great July? Um, BPP most likely will become more open probably starting in the middle of the year. And so, um, and I think that's definitely part of a larger conversation of yeah, how many new artists can we get into that space because they're most likely going to have another space to be able to access more consistently starting in July. So yeah, and it's a small kind of entry level Correct. venue that could yeah. be a good addition. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, if you don't have any suggestions right now, don't hesitate in reaching out to Holly if you have suggestions a few days from now or a few weeks from now. They're always welcome. Cool. And yes, Ellie, it is Bloomington Playwrights Project. Holly, what is the state of the financials? Uh, so state of financials are pretty much the same as last month. Give me just a second while I figure out how to share my screen. You got it. Okay. Oh, what are you seeing, y'all? I <laughs> a spreadsheet. Okay, just a spreadsheet. Okay, awesome. So, um, so basically, you see, we have a lot of money to spend for grants this year. I think I shared this um, last month as well. Nothing's really changed because our cycle hasn't kicked off yet. The first one kicks off next Monday. Um, so right now, we have just under $150,000 in grant funds to spend this year. That's a combination of a couple different sources of money. Um, so we have uh, BUEA, so Burbit Bloomington Urban Enterprise Association. Um, they give us a chunk of forty thousand dollars every year. So this year we did not we didn't spend our twenty twenty one funds. So they approved us using those funds from last year in addition to an extra forty thousand dollars this year towards grant things. So that's $80,000. Um, we also have our normal $40,000 allocation from the city to spend on grants in addition to some extra funds that we didn't spend at the end of 2021. So again, that's where you're seeing that number of roughly 150K. And then in a separate account, which is operating funds. So again, this is things that we would consider use, we would consider using this to do things like pay windfall dance to do performances. So in that fund, we have just under $35,000. Um, and again, once we start paying out grants with our first winter cycle, and once we start paying, you know, I know we'll at least be paying windfall in the spring to do their longer term performance for the trades garage, you'll start seeing some of those funds spend down. And I'm happy and to answer any questions. Yeah. Holly, just to clarify those that separate account is it 35,000 or 3500 oh i'm sorry it's 3500 35 for anybody okay. listening who's yeah. not looking at the spreadsheet yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if only well if only yeah or another challenge a good so challenge i just yes. wanted to clarify <laughs> thank you okay okay any questions about that before i stop sharing my screen okay perfect Okay. And then did you all have a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting? I see a lot of heads nodding. Anybody have any changes, suggestions, or comments? Okay, I move to approve the minutes from our last meeting. I second. Okay, Elliot? Uh, yes. Karen? Yes. Nick? Yes. Natalie? Yep. All right. That was easy. Let's jump in into public art. Nick, Holly, will you give us the update? 
Yeah, uh, you know, we can start with um, 1% projects. Um, as Holly spoke to the reopening of the Waldron, um, you know, the conversation that we had in Friday's uh, public art meeting um, is that rather than trying to pile on top of that for the 4th Street Garage dedication, um, it felt like th there's a chance that that would distract a little bit, um, either from the activity of the Waldron or overshadow, more likely, um, the the artists uh, who are involved in um, the 4th Street Garage. We're going to split those. And so I think right now we're maybe looking at the first Friday in April, um, pending the mayor's office availability. Um, so that's the latest there. Um, but otherwise, like the project is complete. Um, uh, Trades Gateway, um, so uh, Natalie, this is the uh, piece that, that we commissioned um, a couple years ago, process started a couple years ago. Um, it's in the uh, sort of like courtyard area outside of the Dimension Mill um, in the Trades District. Um, so uh, we had to uh, split ties with um, the previous fabricator we had on board. Um, Holly is working on a call to other fabricators to get another partner on um, to work with Stefan Reese, um, the artist. Um, and then uh, the BUA has offered to potentially put up some uh, additional funds to help, su help supplement since fabrication costs have almost certainly risen in the last two years since we first started talking about this. Um, you know, hopefully that allows a project which has already been scaled down a few times from the original concept to um, still be completed in something that's still an approximation of the, the original um, artistic vision. Um, and then, I mean, really beyond that, um, other 1% projects, you know, are sort of stuff down the line, um, you know, hospital redevelopment, um, a new tech center in the trades district, maybe reopening things with the Monroe County Convention Center. Um, those are all sort of TBD projects um, that Holly is just going to try to keep her ear to the ground and keep us updated on um, meetings that, that she's a part of and look for our opportunity to, to jump in when the time is right. Um, that, is that everything for 1%? Holly, am I forgetting anything? The, the only question that I have in terms of the 1% is the parking garage mm -hmm. opening in possibly April, do we have a plan as to what that ribbon cutting might entail? And do we need to brainstorm or contact any artist to do some cross-discipline uh, project? Holly? I, okay, I have an idea. I think I've shared it with Bryony. I've shared it with the mayor's office. I don't know if this is the moment um, because it is, um, it's, it's an undertaking. Um, and I don't know if we would be ready to do this in April, but um, it's a Fluxus piece called something like Motor Vehicle Sunset. And it is a suite of vehicles parked in a garage. There's a person in each vehicle who gets an index, like a Rolodex of prompts, like honk the horn, pop the trunk, open and close the door three times. Each person in a car has one of these. And so basically it creates a soundscape. There is a conductor. I know the mayor is a conductor. He conducted the Bloomington Symphony Orchestra last summer. So I think it would be great to have him at the ribbon cutting ceremony or at another event at a future point in time where we have more time to plan this and determine who the people are in the cars and make sure there is buy-in for this chaotic sonorous event um, to happen in the parking garage. Um, so. That's my proposal for a performance that I would like to see happen at the garage. I don't know if this is the moment. I can say for me, my bandwidth is very much going to be swallowed in um, leading up to March and then into March, either by getting the Waldron ready for the opening ceremony and then being on the ground with our feasibility study colleagues. Um, I'm concerned that I won't have the bandwidth to pull this off by April 1st. Um, so I would be open to exploring doing something a little more low key and then working with you all to identify an artist for something smaller. And then thinking for something like this down the road, acknowledging that we don't want events 
around public art just to kind of be one-off. We don't want this to be a thing where a ribbon cutting just happens and then we forget there is art. We want to continue to have events to remind the community that, hey, this is an active piece that is worth revisiting and reactivating. So those are my thoughts. Thoughts? Um, I have a question. Is is the, the garage going to be closed or would there be cars going by? I mean, I haven't been inside the garage. I've just seen the outside. Or would we want to do this like on the top level or something like that? Yeah, I, it would, yeah, it's a good question. It would definitely take some coordination with the parking office, who we also worked with for the trades um, the, the trades district garage, just because that was also an issue of was there going to be an outflux of cars at 5 p.m.? So it would be a matter of negotiating with the parking department to make sure that was safe. <laughs> do you know? Do you know how full it tends to be? Right to be now? honest, right now it's not that full. Um, I think it would just be a matter of keeping in touch with parking and helping us just kind of stay on top of the radar of knowing how many people are purchasing permits um, and just kind of monitoring traffic around the time of year that we plan to do this. In. And again, we did something very similar for the trades garage opening. They helped me stay on top of like whether or not people from Catalent were going to be in the building and just what trends were looking like. And, and we decided ultimately 5 p.m. right in front of one of the exits was totally fine for this. So, But yeah, it would very much be a collaboration with the parking department. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know the piece you're talking about, um, the performance and say, so Fluxus is a, a, um, you know, I don't know, I guess like mid-century kind of like experimental performance art movement, um, in the United States and also Europe, it was most popular, um, where, you know, performances were written with scores, like musical scores, and then you know, they can be activated and reactivated. So anyway, I think it's a great idea. Um, I would love to do it, but yeah, I don't know short of that, you know, I, I the parking structures, it's tough. You know, you, you want to do something different than like windfall, which was great, but that, you know, we've already sort of done that. Um, I don't know. I mean, is there a local group that we can tap into? And it might be like the Jacobs School of Music, something like that, where we can say, hey, we've got this idea. Anybody interested in doing it? Um, and it's just a matter of supporting them versus organizing it. Yeah, I, I and I, and so, sorry if I missed this in the initial explanation. Like, I guess, um, are we, like how how baked is the concept right now? Like like are we looking to pull in an artist to basically like like curate and art direct this whole thing, or is there like a like a pretty firm concept? And it's more just about like the execution of it. Like I guess I'm trying to imagine like how many people and what disciplines we would need to potentially commission for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fair question. I think, you know, it would be a matter, I think, like Brian, you said, I think it would be finding the right music group to collaborate with who would really take it upon themselves to say, these are our needs. These are the number of times we need to rehearse. I think the number of cars, I would say between, I would, looking at footage from when this has been pulled off before, I would say between five and 10 cars would be fine. Um, so, but I think the score is already written. I think it would be a matter of finding somebody who was excited to do it and just working with them to plan the logistics so they could get in, do a few rehearsals and then do it. But I, I would, it would be my hope that, and I wouldn't want to do it any other way unless we found a group of musicians who were super duper excited to take this on. Um, could you send me a link to the one piece that you're using as inspiration and there's a couple of people that i can send it to and say if not you then who yeah sure <laughs> kind of thing and oh, uh, and see if we can find something there yeah 
And then as a backup one, I think we, we can always find some kind of spoken word or something that, you know, becomes a lot easier, doesn't need to be quite as rehearsed, but you can right. still activate the various floors, the various spaces in some way or another. Yeah, yeah, I think I do. I will say, I think, you know, I, I think the mayor really enjoyed the windfall dance performance at the trades garage. I think he was surprised by it. And I, I, I don't want this to be the only thing Bloomington is known for, but I do think there is something interesting to be said about we do good art in parking garages um, that I would like to find ways, even if it's not a bunch of cars honking their horns at once to keep that trend going. I think it's a unique quality for something so, we don't think about so much. So. so Natalie, this all stems from the idea of that all of these ribbon cuttings are kind of boring and mundane and there's a speech, there's a ribbon cutting and everybody goes home and everybody just stands in the cold for 20 minutes. So if it, we're trying to kind of lighten the mood, bring cross disciplines and try to do something a little bit more interesting for all of these. Um, so I saw your message in the chat. Let's um, coordinate through email so that we're not reaching out to the same people though. I'd rather not bombard people from various uh, commissioners. All right, I'm good with that for all of the 1% unless somebody else has something else. Well, I, I just wanted to sack on quickly, um, you know, maybe just to think about this as like a backup, just so like we, we maybe like parallel process and, and maybe it's like a backup idea, but also could be integrated into what you're looking at here, um, you know, with the sort of Fluxus performance piece. Um, I know that last year prior to completion, one concept we discussed um, was how to get WFHB involved in the ribbon cutting um, since they are you know, the other neighbor directly across the street um, and the building they're in, you know, connects to the garage. Um, you know, like, unfortunately, their their local live show is on Wednesdays, not a Friday. Um, you know, so, you know, if, you know, let's say, you know, like the mayor's office wasn't available for that Friday and we were trying to figure out another thing to tether it to, you know, we could always try to like, you know, bridge it to that. I mean, even outside of their their specific programming for say like a live performance. I do think that um, whatever we do, we should try to get them involved, um, you know, and, you know, even, even if it's just as simple as like making sure that like they do a piece on it and they, you know, yeah. ha have someone with, you know, a microphone capturing some audio, <laughs> whatever else, um, you know, so that there's a little bit more color to it than, than just like an interview. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think we should think about that as well. Um, yeah, because like I, like back on the like the traffic stuff, I, I think we'll have to do like sort of a dive on like what what other events will be going on because I think there will be a lot a lot more on an average Friday night there than there would be at the at Trades Garage where things are basically dead at that time. Um, and the other the only other thought I'm going to throw out um, is. Like we want someone to engage people in person, um, but we also may want to think about like how whatever we're doing um, might play on social media, um, you know, or in like photos and videos after the fact. Like one little bit of feedback I got um, from the trades garage thing um, from people who were not there but saw, saw stuff on socials is I don't think the dance performance and this is natural, right? Like it's not everything translates when you're looking on a phone, but it, it certainly to the couple of people I talked to did not translate as well to people who were just like consuming photos and short video clips, you know, kind of got like the, what the heck is this? You know, like, like, you know, this is what we're spending our arts money on, you know, sort of typical thing that, that we hear anytime we do anything. Um, Cause art is not designed to please everyone at all times. Um, but it, it did at least make me think that like, um, that yeah, wh whatever we do, if, if it doesn't like translate perfectly visually, we might just want to make sure that there's like a really clear like artist statement that accompanies it, you know, so there's some like real text to, to like contextualize it. And I think that would also help if we all do social media coverage in a more cohesive way. Um, other than trying to piece it all together and, 
in an uncoordinated way. Anything else? Shall we move on to the RFQs that are coming up? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Holly has been putting in some great work um, on prepping RFQs for the Rogers Family Farm Park, aka the, the goat park, uh, the goat farm rather, on the southeast uh, side of town. And then uh, the one to follow that will be the, the bike garage, the People's Park adjacent mural. Um, that's been on the docket for a while. Um, so uh, Holly has a timeline that she um, shared with uh, the public art committee. You know, the goal is to get the goat farm RFQ out this week um, and work towards, uh, you know, sort of confirming um, the, the artist by May 16th. Um, and then for People's Park, uh, the idea is for the RFQ to go out first week of March, ideally, and then again, uh, award the artist by June 1st. Nick, can you just clarify what the RFQ is and how it's different from a request for proposals or others? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, the the concept of the RFQ that, that we typically rely on is a request for qualifications. And so, um, the, the distinction there is we're not seeking like site specific proposals. We're not, no, we're not seeking like show us the statue you're going to make, you know, show us, you know, a sketch of the mural you're going to make, you know, what, what we're mainly looking at is we want, you know, we want to see artists CV, you know, we want, uh, you know, to ask them specific questions about, you know, their experience, you know, what role have they played in previous projects? You know, um, you know, what's their experience working within a budget and completing things on time? Um, you know, what what elements of you know community engagement or collaboration with you know with other 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 people or entities? Right? You know, we're, we're involved in in the creative process, um, and things like that. And so, uh, Holly has a uh, basically complete draft of of you know, the, the Go Farm RFQ um, that uh, at least Brian and I have looked at. And Holly, let me know. Um, I, I, I can give it one more scan, but if there's anything specific that you want feedback on, um, you know, let me know and I can make sure I do that today. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the gist is like we, we give some context and history, you know, for the site and what we're looking for, you know, uh, some background on, you know, either the community elements, you know, in this case where this is like was once a family farm um, that is now, you know, become city property. You know, part of it's like giving context for that family, um, you know, and then we sort of state our criteria and the selection process so people know what they're getting into. Um, uh, yeah, did I leave anything out there, Holly, that you want to add on to? I, I think that's pretty thorough. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. One question for you, Holly. Yeah. In, in terms of the form that mm -hmm. people are going to fill up, is that completed or do you so, still need feedback on that? Yeah. So I was going to say I need um, feedback on two things from you and Nick, if that's okay. Um, so the family did give me a little more detail about their background, which I included in the RFQ earlier today. It's just an additional paragraph. And then I know, so um, we, talked about overhauling what we're asking people to show us when they show us their qualifications as a response. And it used to be a letter of inquiry or interest. And now it's a Google form until we got our grant software in March. Um, and they're just basically answering questions about, you know, what have you done in the past? Give us some examples of projects. Did you stay within budget? Were you engaging the community? Blah, blah, blah. So I think there was one question we had unresolved about, did we want to ask them, like, why does this project in particular resonate with you? And I think I sent you an email earlier, or oh, I don't remember when I said it, maybe on Friday, about, um, you know, just the language of that question. So if I could have you both just take a look at that paragraph and then um, take a look, think about that question. I'll send this to you in the email after the meeting just to make sure you have that all, not me just- Okay, yeah, I think, I think it's important to ask, you know, why are you interested? What What is it about this project that is exciting you? And Right, 
uh, moving you to go through this process mm -hmm. more than just uploading samples of work and explaining right. those. There has to be a little bit of thought and investment where we're not asking for sketches, but a little five minute deep thinking, I think is appreciated and valued. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Holly, I can I could definitely do that. Um, I'm going to be out of town the next couple of days, and so like and pretty off the grid, and so I just want to make sure I, I get you everything you need um, today. So I think that, okay, that I'll, yeah, I'll just like... I'll just send you a follow up email as soon as we're done with the meeting, and then I yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. And then my goal yeah. is then just to make it public um, on Friday, and once it is out in the world, there will be a press release on it. But I think we've all agreed that a press release only does so much, um, and so what I would like to do is just ask all of you, for those of you who know sculptors or people who know sculptors or cool people that this needs to be in the hands of just to help get the word out. I think that's gonna be really important um, for this project. I just wanna make sure. So um, the review process will be a collaboration of the um, Public Arts Subcommittee, along with the Director of Parks and Recreation here at the city, along with the family. So I just wanna make sure we're giving them a really cool, robust pool of applicants to work with. Um, so, and the, the more help I can get on getting the word out, the better. Thanks. Any questions? Any um, other updates on smaller projects or things that are deep in the pipeline that we should be aware of? Did we talk about, did you talk about Hidden River or not Hidden River, I'm sorry, um, the Greenway project? Nick? I did not, if you want to. So um, I, I think we discussed this briefly last month. So um, I, the Department of Planning and Transportation here at the city has designated several neighborhood streets across the city as greenways. And basically what that means is they are low car traffic more meant for pedestrians and cyclists. And they're also meant for just people, places people can come and feel safe on the sidewalk and be able to congregate with their neighbors. Um, so as part of this process, they wanted to incorporate some kind of visual element on the street to say, hey, this is a gathering place. This is marking it as a greenway. And it's something beyond you know, the stencil we see now that's like the green outline of the cyclist. Um, so they approached me with a suggested design, which I, which I took to the public art committee and we agreed we can do better. Um, so I, I took that proposal back to uh, planning and transportation. They were like, you're right can you give us money to find artists? So we've applied for some Indiana Arts Commission money to do just that. Um, so once that money hopefully goes through, we'll be collaborating with transportation and planning to find an artist to do the street murals on two of these greenways. It's kind of gonna be like a beta test of what this looks like when we put art on the ground to try to you know, just enhance the idea that the Greenways are going for. Um, so I think that is a project. We would probably start artist selection for that in spring and then try to get the construction done in summer and fall. Um, but I know one thing we've talked about previously in these meetings is just collaborations with other city departments and doing more integral work with neighborhoods. And I think this is a really good example of us being able to do this work. Um, we're also, you know, it's interesting when you apply for Indiana Arts Commission money, it's they're very much about accessibility. So I've also been having conversations with um, the city's um, Council for Community Accessibility and their staff liaison for how we can make this an experience that is accessible for everyone. Um, so I'm gonna be meeting with members of that group at the end of this month to talk about how projects like that can be more inclusive. And so again, I think this is just a good example of how we're, kind of just seeing how the arts can get more integrated into other parts of city planning together. So. That's great to hear. Questions, comments? All right, well, moving right along. Do you, if we don't have anything else for public art, uh, Elliot, will you 
give us a fairly big update on grants because <laughs> uh, the grants committee has met a couple times. We've made some major strides, but I don't think we've shared with the entire commission what the plans are. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, really exciting stuff. So I um, am now the grants uh, subcommittee chair and I've been meeting with Holly and Bernie about um, as well as the, the, the subcommittee about how to um, rethink or restructure, rejuvenate the granting process so that um, we can, um, I think, better target um, grant recipients um, and meet their needs more specifically, um, meet their needs at a greater um, amount, particularly this year, because we do have nearly $150,000 um, to dole out because of um, the the sort of COVID um, Recovery Act backlog. So we have more funds, we need to disperse them, award them. We want to target um, really specifically and also from our end as a committee in a, in a sense of workflow, ease the process. So um, in the past, we've had um, a bit of a kind of bottleneck where um, the granting process happens really fast and furious. And then there's a lot of lag time and then the next grant cycle comes up. So anyway, all to say, um, we've decided to um, compress the grant calendar into about a 10 month period per year. So February to um, 10 month, did Valentine's I say? Valentine's to Thanksgiving. Valentine's to Thanksgiving, right, thank you. That's the, uh, that's the like hook. So the idea being that um, those two holidays book and the grants the grant year and that um, all of us including um, applicants have time off um, for holidays and things like that and we're going to create um, quarters four of them of course because they're quarters uh, where we would target first project support grants so this is something that comes from um, our previous infrastructure and then um, also operations grants, not in this order yet, um, which again comes from our, our previous cycle structure. And then between projects and operations grants, we'd have an emerging artist cycle and another emerging artist cycle. So, um, which is a, a new um, endeavor on our part that we just started last cycle. So the idea being we're gonna fund projects we're going to then target emerging artists. We're going to then fund operations, so general operations for cultural organizations. And then after that, do another round of emerging artists. Um, it'll, it'll be ambitious. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I think this year will be a huge learning curve year, but I'm really excited to, to do it because um, I think we just, you know, we've, we've got the resources and, um, and I think, uh, you know, we have the energy for this right now. Um, so I can share those dates maybe in notes. I don't know that it would be helpful to just say them out loud here um, for the cycles. Um, but what else? I'm, I'm missing tons. I'm sorry. I'm kind of, I, I came from a long day. So I'm kind of like a little rambly right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the main thing is the fact that we've broken it down into separate grants instead of saying, okay, it's time for grant cycle. You go in, you apply for either project or operational or emerging artist. Um, we're going to treat them each as their own individual cycle. And that will also make it a little bit easier for the artists and the organizations to know, okay, I know that I'm what I'm looking for is at the beginning of the year, is at the middle of the year. And ideally those who are applying for project support and operational support will also help us promote and grow the emerging artist um, grant cycles by you know, sharing it with employees who are starting out or people within their organizations that have not received grants before and can give them that support. And, you know, really 
focusing on growing that part of our grants because while we started it last year, it got buried in the bundle of operational and project support and barely anybody knew about it and it, it just got lost in the shuffle. And then the other thing that we're, we're spearheading is um, being very conscious on how we are promoting this through social media this time around. Yeah, exactly. So, so separating out those will help us target and promote um, so that it's not just all the kind of generic wash of, of any, you know, all three of those grant types at once. Um, you know, potentially there could be some cross pollination. I could see emerging artists partnering with organizations, you know, so that might be an interesting dynamic that could come up because of the new uh, ebb and flow of the cycle. Um, and I, another thing that I think is important is that we are um, raising the grant cap from 2000 to 4000, right? Um, because we have quite a bit of funds this year. And we're also removing um, the um, matching support requirement. So in the past, we've asked organizations to match the funds that we're giving them either with actual um, you know, spreadsheet cash flow on their organization that they're putting in or in kind, which you know, is labor materials, things like that. Um, particularly for emerging artists, that would obviously be a, a kind of prohibitive um, uh, requirement, um, but also for organizations, it could be to ask them to, um, to match resources. So the idea would, we could target um, projects and organizations that are a little bit more of, um, you know, upstart grassroots where um, they wouldn't necessarily have the matching resources. And just with a caveat that we would not be funding 100% of the project. While we are not asking for a matching, we're still not going to fund the entire project by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, you know, there needs to be, um, you know, a, a demonstrated need and self-initiative, of course, but not the same kind of one-to-one -one matching. Initial thoughts, observations, comments from those who are just learning about this. I just wanted to thank you all for the work. I know it's very intense going, getting, you know, getting through all of that. So thank you. Thanks. It will be intense. <laughs> it will be, it will be more intense this year, but I ideally like every, every cycle is on the same kind of schedule. So We've laid it out. They all have the same amount of days, the same amount of review, the same process. And once we do one, the other should get easier. And you know, after a year, it should all fall into place and it would be faster and easier for anybody to implement. Any other thoughts, observations, feedback? Uh, Nick? I'm going to kind of uh, call on you just because you are one of the longer lasting commissioners and you've seen several evolutions of the grant cycle. And I don't believe anything quite like this has been done before. So I would like to see if, if you see the potential of this shaking things up in the, in a positive way or based on prior experience, if this is something that we should not be doing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like it in general. Um, you know, I, I think like, I think the emerging artist category and like giving that its own lane makes a ton of sense. Um, that is something we've had difficulty, I think sort of uh, recruiting for, or, or, you know, and I don't know if that's just like a general, you know, messaging issue or if maybe they're just there's a perceived barrier for entry for folks you know especially when they see the types of groups that we fund regularly um and see how many of those are established and so you know hopefully creating like a separate lane there um makes it a little bit easier for people to put themselves forward um you know like i 
on the, the matching part, I think it's interesting taking that away. I don't have any issue with it. Um, I, I definitely think there are, were some, uh, when I joined the commission, that there were probably some like long serving members who would have balked at that um, just out of like the concern for making sure that, again, we're not like fully funding something. But I think as long as there's some mechanism for, you know, considering that in the review, I, you know, I, I think that's great. I think the, the only other question I had, um, I guess, would be, um, you know, since there's sort of like different moments in the cycle, right? Um, if someone, I guess, is there any strict criteria that, you know, like, I, I guess, like, if, if someone applies for, um, like the, like a normal project support grant and doesn't get it, um, and then they apply later, is it like a separate application to apply for like the emerging artist thing? I guess, I guess, could you have the same group or same organization or same individual like apply to both lanes? Um, and do we care about that or? I think it would be really hard to have somebody qualify for both. An emerging artist can apply to a project support and say, you know, I'm all in on this. Whereas somebody who has received prior project support cannot apply for an emerging artist. One of the main things is that you have not been funded before. And right. for operational, you know, say um, one of the theater companies, they can ask for project support. And if, the, if been granted project support, I would say they're not gonna get operational support because that, that continues to be what we've done in the past. Um, yeah. And they should not be funded twice in a single year. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe this maybe here's a more specific scenario is let's say we get like a projects like a project application for say like artisan alley and it involves like there's like three people that are part of the application, right? And one of those people is an artist who themselves is emerging and then they separately like apply for like an individual emerging artist sort of grant, you know, like it, are, are we prepared to sort of like, I think that would be parse fine. that nuance and recognize yeah. those are different things. I, I, I would be fine with that as long as it's not the same project. Sure. Then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of manufacturing a question since you, yeah. since you posed <laughs> it to me, but, but uh, no, I, I think, yeah, I think the general shape of it's great. I think it's a exciting evolution. All right. Anything else you have to add, Holly? The first cycle opens on Monday, February 14th. Again, going to ask you all to help spread the word. Um, and it's, uh, it's uh, the first one is uh, pro arts projects. So yeah, and then emerging to follow, which will open in the spring. So um, we're working on uh, finalizing the actual application form now. Thank you, Elliot and Helen for working on that. And then we'll link it to the website and I will make sure you all have the information you need to blast it to the world. And also thank you, Bryony, for doing such a great job with social media. Um, I will follow with Facebook posts as well. <laughs> um, yeah, one quick way for anybody to share is just, you know, share this, what, what I've been posting on Instagram. Is there going to be like an official press release or something from yes. the city? There will be a press release, most likely okay. next week. Yeah, yeah. But again, just acknowledging, I think we all know that only does so much work. And again, I've been um, kind of since taking this position and, you know, meeting with people and then just going through the backlog of who is applied for and gotten or not gotten grants in the past and knowing who Sean has worked with in the past, I've kind of been growing a list of people I will also individually blast mm. with this information. So. It might be worth, as you email all of these people to add to your signature or somewhere around there, a follow the Bloomington Arts Commission on yes. Instagram. I'm happy to do that, yeah. And the, that way you start to transfer a little bit of that burden to them and then they can go check it out and then they will be able to share it with other people in a way um, that forwarding an email is not as yeah. juicy. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Email has lost its juice, I agree with you. Yes, <laughs> without a doubt. Anything else in regards to grants? Elliot, do you have any specific needs? 
um, just grant readers, people that help out, right? So um, if you know anyone in the community who'd be qualified, please send them my way. Um, and if you yourself are not on the grants committee and would like to read, let me know. I'll be reaching yeah, and, out. And you can choose to participate on all four of them or in just one or recruitment, anything that you want. Um, we created a separate um, BAC grants calendar. So if anybody wants access to that, let me know and I'll send it your way. But it just highlights like when we're reading, when the application is open, when we're prepping the next one. It's just a nice little overview, but we did not want to overburden the BAC calendar with all of those details. All right. Um, let me go back to the agenda. Wrong agenda. Grants. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Is that it, Holly? It is. It's so early. I know. <laughs> um, all right. Well, before we jump into commissioner announcements, I would like to invite the members of the public to say hi and to see if they have anything to share with us today. Hey everybody, Chaz from FAR. Just wanted to say that, just wanted to remind everybody that on March 4th, we have the FAR Photo Review Exhibition and it's possible because we got a grant from you all. So thank you very much. And yeah, I just wanna thank you again and say hi and to welcome Natalie to the grant or the commission, very exciting. So thank you. Christina. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Christina. I just wanted to um, come on today and kind of say hi and see what you guys are doing. Um, I was invited by a couple people, so I just wanted to say hi. Um, it was a great meeting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, it's always nice to see new people around here um, or new to the meeting people around here. And uh, hopefully you can help us spread the word for the, all of the grants and uh, especially the emerging artists. We're really, really excited about this kind of program and we hope, we really wanna see it succeed. Moving on to commissioner announcements. Anybody have anything to share? No new pet adoptions, no big projects, events, anything? Natalie, what's your pet's name? I've seen him pop up a couple of times. Oh, her name's Willow. Um, sweet little beagle mix that just loves popping into my Zoom calls. Um, so it's great. Nice. I do have a, um, we just opened an exhibit today at the, there she is, um, at the Cook Center um, in Maxwell Hall on IU's campus. It's called um, the Black Lit Exhibit. And it's featuring seven um, local and student and faculty um, black poets. So it's really great. Um, that's open Monday through Friday, noon to 4 p.m. And we'll be having an opening and poetry reading on um, Gallery Walk, Mark, or so March 4th as well. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I will send you all off to uh, enjoy an extra 26 minutes of your day. Reclaim them. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you around for our next meeting, be it a subcommittee or the general meeting. <laughs>